what's really interesting is that it used to be the norm, you know, being a baritone and having someone with uh, slightly lower tones. Uh, now I feel like the odd man out. I mean, there's so few of us left. Uh, it's almost as if you can count them on one hand. Uh, so, I mean, I feel unique in that way. And I feel special, you know what I mean? That, you know, I'm kind of holding up the flag for, you know, the, the Billy Eckstein's of the world and the, and the, 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 the Teddy Pendergrass's and, I mean, to be even be more contemporary. So, you know, it's my job. I'm doing my job. <laughs> Have you considered what it means to be you in the sea of what's out there now? Well, I mean, what's odd is, is these days that people are almost afraid to say that they're a dog. You know, that everything is so youth-oriented that even folk who are a little older are trying to be something that they're not. And, and to talk about things that, like, they don't, or to use even lingo that they don't necessarily use, you know. I mean, I, I heard one artist one day, you know, someone who's older than me, you know, it's been around for a lot longer, referred to, like, their, their significant other as their boo. And it's kind of like, it's kind of looked over, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> first name Charlie, last name Wilson. It's okay. See, I can say the stuff that you can't say. And actually, I wasn't even thinking about him. <laughs> I mean, you know, Charles is an amazing singer. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it it goes back to what I said earlier about people trying to dumb things down just to accommodate, you know, the market out there, which is very youth driven. So, I mean, you find yourself not being yourself. Um, I'm of the, the ilk of like, I don't care. I can't sing about something that I don't know about. Um, I can't relate to it, so I'm, my, I'm me. You know what I mean? This is the way I dress. This is who I am. I'm not gonna, you know, try to present myself any, any, any other way. So, yeah, I mean, it's a long road, but it is the more consistent road, and I think that artists such as myself and a Charlie Wilson and or a George Benson and or Anita Baker or, you know, unfortunately, the passing of Luther, but, you know, someone who's been around for like a long period of time, I would think that artists would, and record companies would look at us and say, obviously these people are doing something right. What is it? And try to follow, you know, that guy. Are you comfortable with, with the idea of being sexy, with being a sex symbol? Like, how does that, you know, do you, do you think about reading that way in, in terms of um, your audience and, and how they feel about your music? Um, I mean, there is a certain logic to what we do musically when we're working and when we're writing. I mean, obviously we want to talk about things that we know about and we also cater to the folk that, you know, fortunately keep us, you know, employed. A lot of times that's women. So, I mean, we, we play to it, of course. Of course we do. Do I feel comfortable in that situation? No. Do I look at myself in that situation? Not necessarily. You know, I think I do what I do fairly well. Um, you know, I, am I Teddy P? Am I, no, am I, uh, who else is, you know, uh, am I uh, D'Angelo, you know, when he was buffed up and doing his thing? No. Am I uh, Maxwell? No. But I think that I carve out, I've carved out a niche for myself, musically, and that's who I am. And if, you know, women seem to like it, you know, you ain't gonna hear me say no. <laughs> <laughs> don't come to the show. No, I don't want to see fine, beautiful women. I'm the audience. <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bring your mom along with you. <laughs> Who do you A, know or consider your audience to be? Like when you're writing or when you're considering what you're recording, who do you feel like you're playing to? And who do you consider your contemporaries to be? Um, when I do what I do, I'm always catering to women from, you know, from age, you know, 20 and up, because that's what I see out in the audience. You know, we, the one thing that, uh, that I do a lot of is I do a lot of concerts. So when I'm not recording, I'm out on the road. So we get to see the immediate response of what the music does to folk. And we know what works and we know what doesn't work. 
So I always cater to, you know, uh, black women <laughs> between ages 20 and up. Um, oddly enough, I was talking with um, Nancy Wilson yesterday. Uh, someone said that she was looking for me, gave me a number, so I gave her a call. I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm nervous as heck. I'm like, well, what, you know, what she want? You know, I mean, that's you know, one of my heroes. And I called her yesterday, and she's like, oh my God, I just love you. I'm going, really? She's my grandson, he loves it. That Stevie Wonder song that you do can't help it. And my, and, and, and my favorite song is Home. And I'm going, damn, you really listen to the CD. And then she went into this thing saying, you know, how the music, what I had done had uh, inspired her at a time when she really wasn't into music. She said well, she's not really listening to gospel. She doesn't really listen to much of anything. But, you know, she just felt that like things were kind of very still in her life and she wanted to listen to something. She had gone to the store and she saw the sensual journeys. She just fell in love with the title. And then uh, she picked it up and fell in love with the CA. And that made me feel great. I mean, that's really what it's all about. I mean, you know, when you do these things, I, when, I, when I was recording Luther was alive, I would always record something like, oh, I wonder what Luther would think about the performance that I just did. You know what I mean? It's, and we all do it, whether we admit it or not, or not, you know, but <sighs> to make a long story even longer, that's the audience, like I said, from the youngest to, and you talk about Nancy Wilson, you know, who's a slightly older demo, but an appreciator of music. So, I mean, obviously I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Some of my contemporaries that I, that I listen to and that I really admire, um, you name one, Layla Hathaway, who's got the most beautiful tone I have ever heard. Uh, I mean, her voice is like butter. I mean, I love Layla. I've been very fortunate enough to have done shows with her in the past, and it's always been a great combination. Um, I would love to record with her, maybe a duet at some point. That would be great. Um, Anita Baker is another one of someone I really admire. Um, Regina Bell. You know, I mean, all these folks have very special voices. You know, there's some artists out there that, you know, they all sound alike to me. But it's the ones that have that thing. As soon as you hear the first note come out of their face, you know it's that. The Diane Reeves of the world. You know what I mean? As soon as you hear that voice, it's like, that's Diane Reeves. You know, man, that's beautiful. So, and there's a host of folk, new folk coming up that, I mean, I pray that they have an opportunity to have a continued uh, career to really show their wares. Uh, but there's a lot of folks out there right now that you know, can really blow. I can't help it. If I wanted to, would you help me? Baby, if I How did you define soul music? What does soul music mean to you? Um, soul music to me, I mean, it means exactly what the word is. I mean, it's coming from deep within. Um, it is it's expression. It's, uh, it's moody. It's love. It's passion. It's all of that. Um, I mean... James Brown is soul, you know what I mean? Him screaming, that's soulful, you know what I mean? Yeah, is it the most pleasing thing to the ear? Maybe not, but when everyone hears it, even from the masses, from black to white, whatever, when they hear it, they know what it means. And that's what soul is to me. Just coming from deep within, just like, you know, I don't care what you say, I may get ugly in the face when I'm doing it, but it's soulful and you understand it. And I can get no better than that.